Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is very important because I don't see it discussed enough online. We discuss in other videos, but this really deserves its own airtime. Today we have Sarah helping in today's video, so be sure to sub to her channel. It's in the description down below. What we're going to cover high level is when you push and the keys to winning. I'm going to timestamp the categories. Let's just get right into it. So what we're going to teach is I've set up this gauntlet to educate and help you learn how to push and how to win in Apex Legends. So in this gauntlet, I have created four different stages and we're going to discuss each of the phases and what it means to actually make a push. So in phase one, you're going to be shooting from a distance and once you get the crack, you move up to stage two. This is stage two located here. And once you're in stage two, you want to make sure to get a crack on the opponent. Now at stage three, you're much closer, but your hitbox is much worse. So you get the crack and at this point, your opponent is going to be using a battery to heal up and you should be able to get the jump on them to finish them off and win the encounter. So let's discuss each of these stages in this gauntlet. And they're very, very important to actually help you succeed and improve on Apex Legends. Let's start with phase one. Now in phase one of this video tutorial that we're gonna discuss on how to push and win on Apex Legends is when you're at this distance, you're doing one of two things. You're holding for positioning because you have zone and it's very important that you hold this angle or you have height and better positioning, but the zone might be perhaps Enemy on the zone of an enemy. So therefore you actually have to push in. So you have to be very, very clear with your team of what you're going to do. And if you don't have comms, at least giving a crack and then pinpointing it on the opponent there. is a very clear sign that you either want to push or you don't want to push. So in this example, we highlighted we're using the R301 with no barrel stabilizer and we have our opponent wearing blue armor because not all the time they're going to have purples or reds. And purples or reds are much harder to push upon and blue is always a clear signal that you might outgun them to be able to potentially out armor them and beat them in the encounter. Let's say your team is in agreement about not pushing. Your goal is just to waste the resources of enemy teams. But remember, if they're doing more damage than you, then it, it's going to be a lot scarier. So be sure that you're not wasting your own resources and identify how many bats and how many shield cells do I have to actually poke to out resource another team. If you can't land your shots at this distance, you better just hold and wait for a better opportunity. Now, let's discuss option two at the stage that we were just discussing. Option two is that if you get the damage done and you are in not an ideal situation, what are you going to do in the scenario? You got the crack, you have to make a decision. Remember, a battery takes five seconds. You have five seconds to make a decision. If you are not going to push, then you're never actually going to push because then you're holding, you're going with option one. If your idea is to push in and make progress, you need to go to stage two. This is an ideal spot because now you have a nice head glitch against your opponent. It's pretty solid and now you're on equal footing. That is your overall goal to make a better push. There's some scenarios where you can maybe push left, push Checking right, for but here. for this example, we're, let's say we're just going to stage two. If you're at stage two, you do need to re-crack your opponent to make a push in. So if you manage to get a lot of damage in, you know even if you push forward that your opponent is not going to hold that angle and continue to shoot at you. Or if you held down your spray, you actually might be able to get the knock. If you get the knock, you have now closed the gap on your opponent. If you close the gap on your opponent, let's say you crack them again, you move up and they're going to battery right in front of you. If they have a battery, and if they don't, well that creates a clear opportunity to get the win right there. So let's highlight that again, and I'm gonna showcase the battery time going back and forth. Now let's simulate the time it would take to full heal whenever you're on a battery. Let's say you do a lot of damage to your opponent, and you crack them, and you move forward, and you know that they got the battery off, but you got the angle right here on them, and then you get the knock, and there you go. So that's how fast your push needs to be once you are able to get that crack and make a play. If you do not and you hesitate, let me show you what happens when you hesitate on a crack or a knock. Let's say you do a lot of damage and immediately they're going to pop a battery. Like, do I push? Hey guys, uh, uh, okay, well, let's push, let's go, let's go. And then you go, they're already healed up. This time frame is the biggest mistake that most players make, especially whenever you're trying to rank up and trying to make a play from plat and above, even in diamond level, your hesitation and calling out random stuff lack for a better word, you can call it crap or whatever, is the biggest mistake of you actually succeeding in winning your fights and losing your fights. So keep that in mind as you're going through this gauntlet. Let's say you don't have this gauntlet, let's discuss that. Let's say you don't have a friend to do this exercise with you and that's perfectly fine and okay. You can use the test dummies, granted they don't move in front of you, to simulate the distance. So you get the crack, you move up, you're gonna move up to this position right here, Listen, here. afterwards, and then you're gonna head glitch this angle right here and then you're gonna finish the target dummy. Once you finish the target dummy, you move up to a more ideal spot, you go for the crack, and then you finish the opponent down. Once you know that you got the crack, of course. There's a lot more HP, but the thing that you're simulating is always moving forward on positive damage that you've done and then communicating with your squad whenever you've done damage. The beauty that is on Apex Legends now is that at least it'll let you know whenever you get a crack on the opponent. 
It'll call out in game that you've cracked and it'll let you know the legend on the upper right hand side of your screen. And this is huge and this wasn't in the game before, but it's so important because it lets your team know that you're doing damage and that this is a great call out to actually make a push. So let's break down hitboxes. I want to talk about hitboxes and the importance of them in an encounter because there is one stage that we were discussing earlier that you are put in a disadvantage. But if you're putting that amount of pressure on an opponent, remember there is a thing, it's, I call it like mind games, it's like an ego play. So I'm going to have Sarah stay in here again. And this position is going to be your worst positioning in terms of hitbox. We discussed this when we were coaching when we were doing this live. So the reason why this hitbox is so poor, and if you want, you can comment down below and help others and explain to them why it's also so poor, but I'm going to do it here, is you'll notice that my full body is exposed in this positioning. So from their point of view, all you see is their full body. If I climb up here, you see their full body. Even if I wide swing this way, it's their full body. So if you're looking from the opponent's angle, all you see is probably the head up in terms of landing shots. I'm gonna show you from that, from Sarah's perspective, what that looks like. We're gonna switch angles real quick. So what do you do in this scenario? Well, you either have to dish out way more damage and out DPS them, or you can rotate and get a different angle. So let's discuss what that means. So let's say I go to stage three and I'm not landing my shots and the opponent now becomes a beamer and I don't have the ideal situation, but the zone is pulling Contact. towards that opponent. So what can you do in this scenario? Maybe you take your shots and then Sarah absolutely just destroys me. So let's take a, an example of that. Sarah going and just fire back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna port and I'm gonna queue up to a different distance and a different angle. So Sarah can do one of two things. She can fly up to me if she'd like, but knowing that I'm on height, she may not be able to make a push. So if I get my battery off and now I have the upper hand on this situation because her full body is exposed and mine is not. Now I'm the one had glitching and she needs to rotate and find a whole different angle to win in this encounter. So that is a play that you can make if and all that you're using your utility to buy yourself some time or push forward or make a play. You can do this with every single legend for the most part. The hardest part is the question, what do I do as a defensive legend and how do I play from the worst possible angle? Let's discuss that. All right, when you're looking from this angle, you're gonna notice as a defensive legend, if you're caught out, let's say the zone is pulling towards them and this has happened where you have to cross an open field as a defensive legend. Unfortunately, that is your worst case scenario and it's going to be probably the worst thing you have to deal with as a defensive legend. So what can you do? The only answer is you have to deal more damage out and if you don't have any other legend with any utility, such such as a Gibraltar bubble, Pathfinder zip, or anything like that, and you're just all full defensive legends putting you in the worst case scenario, there is absolutely nothing you can do besides dishing damage out and moving forward. So let's say they're peaking and they have an angle. Their hitbox is infinitely smaller than yours. You're gonna have to find a bit of geometry, whether it's a little hill, whether it's an angle, to get your hitbox smaller so you're harder to hit. And unfortunately they have height, so they're always gonna be able to find a better angle on you. So if you manage to get a crack, hopefully they'll bat, and you'll, you'll be able to move up. And whenever they're batting, that five second time frame at this point, you'll be able to peek and then hopefully get a knock. And now you have a 3v2 situation. And as you're peeking up, you can put your defenses up, you can put your fences and then make a play potentially right next to your opponent. It's really a unfortunate circumstance if you're ever at this angle and it's going to be very, very difficult to win. So let's discuss another scenario if you're a defensive legend of how you push forward and what you do. So let's say you're a defensive legend and you get caught at a position. The only thing you can do is look for an immediate cover as fast as possible. So if I'm getting shot at and I'm moving to cover, I can bunny hop, wall bounce, and now I have my cover and angle here. I can use my defensive utility to hold and hunker me down for just a second if I need to, whether it's a caustic barrel or whether it is my ultimate to heal myself back up but essentially I can heal back up and they will not drop from height, most teams. If they have zone, they have positioning, but if they do not have positioning, rest assured that they're going to push you. So what you need to do if they have better positioning in this scenario is you need to be able to dish the damage back to them. So if you're gonna try to keep your hitbox small as possible and they happen to poke out and you miss your shots, it's perfectly fine. You're gonna go into a solid 1v1 and you're going to fight and you get your crack and you move forward. You hoped that they're going to bat in this scenario. And of course what you can do is a Watson, you gotta climb up. And at this point, they should have their bat off. And it's the worst possible angle to push, but now you have your gen up and you can fight back and get the knock and then move up on this encounter and fight. That is really the best opportunity that you have as a defensive legend to move forward. So let's discuss what happens if you are a more mobile legend. Let's do it both with Wraith and with Pathfinder to showcase what that looks like. With Horizon, it's very straightforward. You get the crack, you queue up, and you counteract, and you do the damage, and you make a play off of it. But let's just showcase it with Wraith and Pathfinder just to give you some examples to help educate you and help you learn how to win and how to counteract. Think of this like a game of chess. All of this is always a game of chess. There's always another move that another opponent can make, but you always have to think two steps ahead on how to beat them. 
So this is much easier if you are a legend that has a, an out, essentially. You're less likely to get eliminated. So let's say Sarah already starts taking shots at me. And I just need to go into phase and get out of dodge. So once they get out of dodge, they, the opponent can do one of two things. They can push, and you can use this geometry angle to kind of hear their footsteps or audio. And if they do not push, you know that they're on the upper angle there. And if they drop, well, this is a clear sign for you that you're going to be able to win the encounter. So at this point, what we need to do is counteract damage back. So if I crack them, I can port forward and make a play. Because I just used my Q earlier, and it's about to come up off CD. So if our teammates are coming up and shooting... Well, that's going to be a great way to say, okay, well, I'm not actually going to stay here. Screw this. I'm going to go back, but at least I made my port because my opponent is dishing a lot of damage back. And that's perfectly fine. So if you crack them, you get a knock. You got the port to go right back in on the encounter. Then you climb up, and now you're going for a potential 3v2. Your teammates hopefully are here to make a play. That is what you need to do to utilize your utility. And this isn't the most ideal situation. I'm showcasing a situation where you literally have to climb up. If this is equal footing where you it's just like a ramp and you play forward, you don't necessarily always have to make a port. Maybe you just at least move up to a different angle so then you can wide swing them so you can get the damage done. So let's highlight this again now with Pathfinder. All right, let's say that you're caught out as Pathfinder. What can you do? So if you're caught out as Pathfinder, that's when you use your grapple and you go right in and you fly in. So you counteract that damage back. And your grapple may not be on CD quite yet, so use that bat, and you notice your grapple is now at 9 seconds. You can put up an ultimate if you'd like to kind of scare them. You may not take the zip because it's always a little bit, bit predictable, but now you, you got them scared. You have options to get up. So you get up, and if they shred you back, well, you pull out your shotgun, and then you zip right up to them, and then hopefully you can win your one. Now you have a different angle on them, and if you lose, it's perfectly fine. At least you made a play, but now you're on equal footing to potentially win or lose the encounter. That is how you make a play. Hopefully your teammates will use a zip to get up. Maybe they won't. That's why you got to calm that you're actually pushing or you're not pushing. But if you're fighting from the low angle, trying to make a play, that is how you turn the table on your opponent. So let me showcase what that looks like on... I know we weren't going to do this example, but I want to showcase what the pressure does for Bloodhound. So let's do that next. What happens when you're caught out as a Bloodhound? So let's highlight that. So if you see a team, you're like, oh, shoot, time to just run and slide jump and get away. You'll do the scan back and you say, wait a minute, this person's a solo. I'm actually not that afraid. So what you do is you get your heal up. And if you're out of heals, then you got to, unfortunately, hopefully one mag them as close as possible. Pop your ult, move forward and get constant scans. Hopefully they're batting back. And if they don't have a bat, then you're going to know instantly, okay, they don't have a bat. Either they're going to wide peek me here, and either I'm going to win the fight or I'm not, and you push forward, and then you win. There you go. You have won your one. You put pressure on your opponent from the worst possible angle from low ground. Low ground is probably the hardest thing to do, which is why I'm highlighting it, of the pressure you put. Those scans will scare an opponent. You'll be able to see whether they're healing or whether they're not healing, or whether they're holding the angle when they're going to peek. So as a Bloodhound, that is when you want to utilize your ultimate whenever you get a crack, when you get a knock, and you're going to full send it because you have the mobility to fly forward and do what you need to do. So as the last part of the video with some reminders, what if you cannot land your shots at those distances? You got to practice. You got to aim train. You got to put the time in. You're in the test range. Even just simply hitting a target dummy and then changing your distances consistently can be huge to helping you improve. Even hitting these targets, because you can hit them and they also highlight the headshot multiplier that you're getting. And that's really important. Do this while you're talking. As I'm recording, as you're talking, your aim always goes out the window. Test it. Have a, try to have a full-on conversation while you're practicing versus whenever you're fully focused. You will realize that your aim does feel different. So you want to try to land as many of those shots as humanly possible. And if you can't, just continue to practice and grind it out. And over time, it will get better and it will become cleaner. And if it doesn't, well, that's why you got to put the time in. And so you can land your shots just as you saw in the video example consistently. And sometimes your sprays will be good. Sometimes they won't be great. And that is why you practice it out. At various distances, various guns, the worst iron sights, do not put barrel stabilizers on your weapons. Practice them without them so you understand what happens when you pick up a gun and you don't have the most ideal loadout. Well, guys, that covers this whole video tutorial. Let me know in the comment down below if this is helpful. I feel like this is the information that is very much missing on YouTube and when to push. I know I discussed it yesterday at high level, but I really wanted to get more in depth on what happens when you get caught out and things that you can really do to improve. So don't forget to leave a like on this video. Every little bit helps li leaving likes, helps other people find the content. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to Sarah, and I'll see you guys on the next video.